Until the end of time We'll have each other's backs And let our true selves shine And that's because everything we need Is alright here when we're with our team Friendship used to make me so queasy queasy You made it all so easy easy Boo 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 What I'm thinking Cause you already know without even blinking Oh without even blinking You are the go to to Let's get a shirt in here to I need Oh hello there Um This is this is mighty embarrassing I I wasn't expecting I wasn't expecting company. Oh man, I just got out the shower though. Whew. Oh man. So um yeah, hold on a second. Why don't you stay here in the closet and I'll go put on some clothes or at least a shirt because you're not going to see down there. So, be right back. Sorry about that. Best friends until the end of time. <laughs> What the buck is up, every pony corpulent brony here? Hey guys, thanks for waiting for me to get a new shirt on. I appreciate it. You know, I'm just not ready to do another video shirtless. Okay, the first one, whoo, was crazy. I've been sort of absent for a while from making videos, and um, it's been a while. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and make a video today during this, you know, little mini mid season hiatus to talk about the. Um, this season, at least the first two episodes of season seven of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to try and quickly go into exactly what I've been doing since I've been not making videos for all of you guys. What have I been doing? I mean, I guess what else is there to be doing? You know, what am I wasting all my time on? You know, get my ass in the closet. So the premiere episodes and breaking with really a tradition that's gone on Back since the pilot episodes, um, premieres have always been two-parters. They've always ended on a cliffhanger, and um, they've always had a lot to do, well, usually, a, you know, a lot to do with the mythology of the show. And this time around, they decided, nah. What we ended up with was two completely unrelated um, episodes. Yeah. Two normal episodes of the pony show for our premiere and they were aired back to back as a two-parter would have been it seems like someone didn't get the memo that hey you're not supposed to you know air these things back to back um or maybe they were supposed to i don't know they didn't make sense to be aired back to back but whatever it was two episodes in one day after going so long without pony so i guess it was worth it maybe we can explore the idea and maybe see if this was a a gouda idea or not so these four, save Ponyville at least, but I guess maybe you could argue Equestria from the Changelings, and they're given these medals, okay? Now, Twy and her friends, the, you know, the eponymous main six, um, saved Equestria <laughs> lots of times, and outside of finales and premieres as well, you know, even Dragon, the Dragon Quest, ep or not the Dragon Quest, the first Dragon episode where the, you know, you know, Pinky's or Fluttershy's dad. <clears throat> that episode was they saved Equestria. Remember, uh, Celestia was worried that the the smoke would cover the sun and ruin Equestria. So they've saved Equestria countless times, and they have been celebrated for it. You know, uh, when they defeated Discord the first time, they had that whole um, Star Wars parade um, into the into the chamber, and, and Twilight eventually was rewarded. Um, she was rewarded multiple times, really, um, with the whole invitation to the Grand Galloping Gala and the um, Friendship Castle and the stained glass windows and all that other shit. So <clears throat> they've been rewarded before, but as far as I know, they've never gotten any sort of Medal of Honor, or maybe this is just some made-up award just for them. Um, I, I don't know, and it's not really gone into, but it just eh, it feels weird to me that 
for this one thing, they're getting this, and and as far as we know, the main six have never received a similar accolade. As I was watching the episode, I want to go ahead and say something positive, is I've noticed the sound engineering on the episodes is really great. It's still just as great as it was back in season four and five when I was <clears throat> talking, when I've talked about it before. I know Amending Fences, when I first really noticed that the sound quality had really gone up, you know, a whole nother level. Uh, the 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 echo that you hear will match your scene you know the amount of reverb they put in is perfect for each scene you know when they're in the castle in the big room uh, because there's a lot of crystal and rock and crap the echo sound you hear a lot of reverb and there's just little touches in the sound if you listen to the foley and um, even just the sound mixing there's some really nice things in there and i only noticed this and i'm only saying it because i was listening to the episode using my like studio monitor headphone things and um, i was like damn there's some good stuff in here yo um but yeah i just wanted to mention it because hey it's one thing that's going really awesome i think um but i was okay back to the metals let's let's go ahead and and go back to the medals. Um, I, I thought it was really awkward, you know, when they're like trying to put it on that one dude's head, you know, the one with the big, the big horns. Not not Iron Will, not Iron Will, but um, the ugly looking colored pony bug thing. Uh, they were trying to get that thing around his horns, and, and I'm sitting there like, well, why would you not have had some sort of a clasp in the back? You know, I've, I've, it, it seems like normal to have something like that, especially in nowadays and. In our lawsuit, you know, loving culture, you know, if someone were to be walking around wearing that medal and gets caught on something and they choke to death, they're going to get sued, man. And I think if Celestia wants to avoid that type of lawsuit, they should really consider, really seriously consider putting some sort of, like, clasp on the back, like a breakaway thing, okay? And, and I mean, besides, I mean, it was obviously, obviously, I know, I know, I know, it's for comedic effect. It was a comedy bit. Um, but, you know, I mean, Discord separated his head from his neck to get it on. I'm sure someone could have come up with a way to separate the cord and then reattach it. But what do I know? <laughs> I'm just some moron making videos on YouTube about my little pony in his closet, no less. Oh, man. Where did I go wrong? Oh, what did I do? Another issue I have with this episode, by the way, it's called Celestial Advice. I know I'm really bad at doing that sort of thing. Um, the problem I had with Celestial Advice is another problem, besides the medals, okay, I think I belabored that point enough, is why is Twilight letting Discord influence her so much? You know, Discord is obviously playing a game with her. And while we as the audience don't really know what the game is, I know the first time I watched the episode, I was like... Man, is this some sort of like, is, is he is he messing with her head? He's obviously messing with her head. And he has a history of messing with Twilight's head and making her freak out. It's fun to do. And to be honest, if I were ever to meet Twilight in real life, I would probably partake of such a thing. Although maybe not to his extreme measures. Because, I mean, it's kind of funny when she freaks out. So why was she letting this happen, though? And it didn't really make sense to me. And in fact... Uh, later on in the episode, we see Celestia almost pushing Twilight in the same types of, slightly differently in her own way, but pushing her also to be a little more crazy, making, you know, odd suggestions when she's doing her little fantasizing. Uh, suggestions that are like, oh, maybe it's not going to work out so well, you know? And Twilight's like, oh, shit, you're right, maybe it's not, oh my god. And um, so Celestia's like pushing her, and then it goes up to the point where Celestia has a good giggle over it all, you know? Celestia's having her little giggle. And at that point, when I first watched the episode, I'm like, damn, is this, is this, is this Discord pretending to be Celestia? Because that would be one hell of a prank. But where am I going with all this? Well, I'm going to a place that I don't even want to go. But I'm going there because people like to go there. And I don't know if anyone's gone there yet. Because, to be frank, I don't really watch many videos on YouTube. What if Discord and Celestia plan that shit? What if this was a time for them to have a little bit of fun? Right? You know, we got Trollestia, who likes to have fun at people's expenses. And we've got Discord, who loves having fun at people's expenses. And without ever really 
spending much time on screen together. They actually worked together quite well in this episode and making Twilight go a little crazy like she likes like she does once, once in a while. And I, I got to admit, I really find those episodes where she goes crazy kind of cute, which is you'd think I'd love this episode because of that. And, and there were a lot of great moments that I did like. So, I mean, it's not all bad stuff with this episode. I got to tell you. Other place where I thought Twy was acting really illogical, which I mentioned this before. I see this. This is her. I, I don't really like the direction they're taking her character ever since Starlight Glimmer was introduced. Is is she's acting so she's like Pinkie Pie used to behave where she's always constantly crazy or Fluttershy is constantly shy and now Twilight is constantly like doing this thing that she does in this episode and she's not thinking things through she's making these jumps um, in logic without any basis in reality like okay Celestia sent me away to Ponyville by the way she sent her to Ponyville for three days or two days right and um, she was going to come back to Canterlot. But in the end, Twilight is the one who wanted to stay in Ponyville. It wasn't Celestia who sent her to Ponyville for permanent, you know, on any sort of permanent status. It was just through the Summer Sun celebration. And then Twilight would be back in Canterlot. But Twilight decided to stay. And this episode makes it sound like, yeah, Celestia sent her away. She's told her, pack up your bags, you're going home. Or you're going to Ponyville. But that's not how this happened at all. And uh, uh, on those same lines, I, I get the whole line with Celestia saying, uh, I knew there were a special group of ponies in Ponyville. But that's bullshit. I mean... Okay, maybe Celestia had inklings that there might be a group of ponies in Ponyville who might be important to the future of Equestria. I'll give you that. But to say that somehow she knew there were five particular ponies in Ponyville named Pinkie Pie, Fluttershy, Rainbow Dash, Rarity, and the other one. And they needed Twilight there to make everything work and to find the elements of harmony. That's sort of what that's insinuating, okay? Now we know, we do know, from the Journal of the Two Sisters that both Celestia and Luna were aware that Twilight Sparkle was special based on her cutie mark. It was in the Tree of Harmony. Okay, and uh, yeah, they do show that in the show. The Tree of Harmony has Twilight's cutie mark. And you notice that Celestia didn't ask Twilight to become her student until after her cutie mark appeared. I mean, Celestia's like, oh, shit. You know, this is important. And she is tied to the Tree of Harmony somehow, which extends on to the elements of harmony. But she, how could she have known? I mean, maybe Ponyville is probably the closest place to the Tree of Harmony. So maybe she's like, well, there must be something in Ponyville maybe that Twilight could use or whatever. I, I, I'm just trying to come up with ideas here, you know? But to say that, that see, the entire reason why I'm coming up with the ideas, though, is because of what she said in the episode, which makes no sense that there's a special group of ponies in Ponyville. She knew it, somehow. It just doesn't jive with the canon so far. It's really weird. The only one that Celestia knew was special was Twilight. Okay, there were some pretty funny parts of the episode, though, of course. There's a whole... There's no wrong way to fantasize. Okay. Okay, yeah. Celestia's pretty funny, and the whole... I was never aware I was an expression. And I don't know if they've ever... Yeah, they have used Celestia as an expression in the show. I know they have. Um, and, and, of course, the Brony Phantom took it to, you know, the h &L, like they like to do in, in a lot of ways. But I seem to remember them saying, like, oh, only Celestia knows. Although I think it's often Twilight saying that. So I wonder if it doesn't come from Twilight's whole mentor-mentee relationship and, or teacher-student relationship originally. Hmm. I have to think about that. That is what I think of Celestial Advice. Um, All Bottled Up was the next one they showed. Again, not really much tying the two together. Um, and as this one opened, Trixie is sitting there whining like a little bitch. Why is Trixie whining like a little bitch? Um, it did seem out of character for her uh, to be doing that a little bit. 
maybe not because she might not be getting things her way and I could see Trixie maybe going in that direction um, but one thing I do want to mention about this episode that I found interesting was um, um, Trixie when she's finally able to do the transubstantiation spell she says um, she says uh, I finally did real magic okay uh, those were her exact words were real magic and if you look beyond the whole reference you could make to a living tombstone song about magic and Trixie where I believe the refrain is real magic okay you guys didn't come to hear me sing did you because I can I can sing more but um, there was actually a reference in the second Prances episode um, and I think this might allude to that a little bit, um, where Starlight Glimmer tells Trixie, because Trixie's all like, oh my god, you know, I really want to do this 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 trick where I fly into a manicore's mouth, you know, and, and it would be so easy, you know, if I could do this with, like, some spell, and, uh, or, and, no, she says it, it, it'll be very difficult. Trixie's like, this is going to be so tough to do, to pull off, and Starlight comes at her and says, you know what, it'd be so easy if you had real magic. Her exact words, if you had real magic. And Trixie's like, oh, well, thanks for rubbing it in. Uh, you know, and, and Trixie's obviously not very happy about that, being reminded that her magic isn't real, whatever that means. I mean, Trixie, it's in her name. She does tricks, I guess is what they're saying. Um, so I'm wondering if, if this is like something that's stuck in Trixie's head at that time, that I can't do real magic. And my friend here just mentioned it maybe I should try and do something about that and maybe she decided to work hard and and try to learn these spells and even though the episode makes it seem like this is the first time she's trying it out who knows maybe she's been doing it for a long time now and 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 she's finally able to make it happen and she's so proud of herself because hey she just pulled off real magic and she did it with her friend Starlight Glimmer proving to her friend and to herself that she was capable of real magic something that she wasn't capable of doing when she met Starlight Glimmer Further showing, of course, the intercharacter and interpersonal development between the two. So I thought that was a pretty interesting touch. And I'm not sure if that was intentional or not. And maybe just a slip up that they just used the words real magic. I mean, it's only been used nine times in the show. Don't ask me how I know. Um, but I do. And, but yeah, that was interesting. I, I thought it was a cool touch. One thing about this episode that I did not like was this whole red, angry smoke monster that kept popping out of uh, Starlight's um little you know thing where did that come from i'm pretty sure we've seen starlight glimmer get angry before and um i know she says something about using her emotions and her emotions driver magic but i would have to go back and watch all the starlight glimmer episodes again which is something i'm not going to be doing um in order to to see for sure but i'm pretty sure she's been angry before hasn't done any magic and the red smoke monster didn't appear so while that provides an interesting plot point it, it's like well, wait a second this has never happened before and not only that but starlight doesn't seem too surprised about it i mean if i had red smoke monsters coming out of my head randomly whenever i got angry you better believe i would be trying to figure out what the fuck's going on I would be going to a freaking doctor, or a magic doctor, or witch doctor, Zakora, whatever. Dr. Fauna, I, she probably won't know. Someone to figure out what's going on with this fucking smoke coming out of my head. But not Trixie. No, it's like, or not Trixie, Starlight Glimmer. It's like, oh, no big deal. Got some smoke. Gonna, gonna bottle it up. Gonna, gonna take my anger. Gonna put it in a bottle. And I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a, a saying into, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make this, the saying into a literal actual thing. I'm gonna bottle up my anger. Seriously? As soon as that happens in the episode, you know exactly where this shit's going. It's going... Uh, because what have we been taught since we're kids, right? Don't bottle up your emotions. Don't bottle them up. Let them out. 
Otherwise, they build up inside you, and then they escape when you least expect it, or when you don't want them to escape. And it's like, I just try to, God damn it, Starlight Glimmer, why'd you have to come in and ruin everything? I'm sorry. Let me just bottle this up. <sighs> okay. So, yeah, it's pretty obvious where this is going from that point on, and it becomes pretty predictable, and I'm like, oh, God. Uh, when I first saw it, I was not very happy. I, at first, I was like, maybe this is some non-diegetic red smoke monster. Maybe this is just something that they're showing um, to show Starlight getting angry. You know, sometimes when characters in shows get angry, they have, like, you know, fire coming out of their head and crap like that. And it's like, that's that's totally non-diegetic. Um, but no, no. In this instance, when she walks into the kitchen and Spike's like, is there something wrong? And again, the, the red answer would have been, yes, there's smoke coming out of my fucking head. Something is wrong. But no, she's like, nah, I'm just angry. I'm gonna find a bottle, cast a spell, put, put all my anger in a bottle. Um, so yeah, at that point, it's like, nope, this is definitely diegetic. So, yeah. okay, makes no sense at all. Doesn't fit with any of the, anything that's ever happened in the show up till now, but fuck that shit. It makes for a story, at least, you know. Another thing I was a little questionable on was this whole friendship retreat thing. Like, why is Starlight Glimmer not invited? I mean, I could understand Trixie. She's still a bit of a bitch, but why not Starlight Glimmer if she supposedly graduated now from friendship school and she's now their best friend and she's becoming part of the group? Why leave her out? I mean, it, it, what kind of f friendship thing is that? I mean, she lives with you. She lives in the castle. I could understand maybe Discord being left out because, you know, he's in another kingdom or, you know, the, the changeling thing because he's in another kingdom. Um, but, but, uh, did, uh, uh, Starlight Glimmer lives with you? Maybe Starlight didn't want to be involved. Maybe she wanted to spend the weekend with Trixie in the castle. I, I don't know. I guess that would make sense. But it seemed like she wasn't invited, which to me feels really weird. I do, uh, I'll go ahead and, um, end it with, uh, end this episode with something I did like about it. And that was, um, towards the end when we're having the climax, um, there's a lot of moments where uh, uh, it kind of jumps back and forth between Starlight Glimmer and Trixie and Starlight's anger going crazy and the main six solving their little their little puzzle thing um, which by, by the way before I go on to this like this puzzle idea that Twilight had while I thought it was kind of cute why why would she do such a thing in a friendship retreat and, and sort of force it down her friends throats when it seemed like none of them really initially wanted to do this it's like, shouldn't, for a friendship retreat, you try to find something that you're all going to, like, want to do and expand your friendship? Um, so it seemed a little odd that Twilight would pick that, but whatever. Um, but, yeah, I liked it towards the end when they were jumping back and forth between um, the, the puzzle, the escape puzzle, and Ponyville with the anger going crazy. There were a lot of times that, uh, when that was happening, that showed the... Um, the totally different mood in both locations and with both situations, uh, you know, and uh, they're trying to solve a puzzle and someone's like, oh, nuts. And then they flip to the, um, the bulky bicep guy, you know, like, like me and my biceps going, oh, and then nuts. He chucks his nut cart. Um, I, I thought it was kind of cute because they did that a couple more times and I'm like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. It's, it's a cool way to meld this A and B plot together and um, I was like, yeah, that's cool, that's cool, I like it. And um, then we hit, then we hit the song. <laughs> oh my god. Now that song was a good song, okay? And, and that was my last video uploaded this channel, I know. And um, I had got a few disappointing comments like, oh my god, I've been waiting three months and this is what you give me? You're, you're such a shitty person, Corpulent. Uh, I hate you, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> jump on the bandwagon. <laughs> There's quite a few people who hate me, um, but whatever. Um, where, where was I going? Anyway, the song. Yes, the song. That. Oh. That song was, that was a good song. You know, and, and for a little background, you know, I was at BabsCon when these episodes aired. Um, I got to watch them with my friend Owen from over the pond he came down to the the city by the gay 
and um, San Francisco, and we uh, watched Pony together in my hotel room, and we ate um, we ate ponuts. You know, King Theo brought some ponuts over the night before, and uh, we ate ponuts, and we watched us uh, some Pony. I think Theo even showed up sometime in the middle. It was fun, man. It was good. Um, so, you know, that song was in my head all weekend, and it was pretty fun to, you know, hang out with some friends, and, um, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty great. One more thing about the episode before we go. I love it how Trixie admits her love for Starlight Glimmer at the end. The starlight I love. I love how it confirms Trix light. Yeah. I think they're cute together. They belong together. Definitely. Definitely. Um, so yeah. That's the episode bottled all bottled up. And um, Celestial Advice, the premiere. Um, I don't know if I'll get into any of the other Season 7 episodes at any time. Um, I will say I've seen the leaked um, episode that everyone's been talking about. Um, that involves uh, apples. And I gotta say, wow. You know, that's another one. Hit me right here, that episode. I don't want to say anything because it hasn't aired yet, but I, I tell you guys, you're in for a treat if you haven't seen it yet. If you have, wow. Other than that, most of the episodes this season, I'm trying to remember, none of them were really like, oh my god, amazing. They've been, eh, eh, better than season six. You know, we've, we no longer have Haber um, bedeviling us. Instead, we have uh, Sanko and Lewis are the editors this season, it appears. And, um, whatever. A lot of the things I've said before about the passion of the writers being lost is, I think, still holds in this... You know, we no longer have Larson, we no longer have Rogers, we no longer have even McCarthy, we no longer have Polsky. <laughs> you know, although we did that EQG one that just aired this weekend, but... Um, we, we don't have these people who kind of began the show. You know, they had a lot of influence on the show, and they loved it. And they were there because they loved it. And now, I know in an interview that um, M.A. Larson did recently with um, a guy who wears a hat on his head a lot, a red hat, um, Larson even mentioned, you know, he said one of the reasons why he left is because he saw there was a lot of micromanaging getting involved in the show. Now that the show had become popular, everybody wanted to work on it, you know. So there's a lot of people coming in, a lot of new, you know, hands coming into the pod and uh, a lot of micromanaging as a result of that. And, and he didn't really like the um, atmosphere, as I understand, he said. I haven't seen that interview firsthand. Um, this is secondhand, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Or what was said. Um, but yeah, I'm like, I, I feel that. You know, I've been feeling that for a while. And I, it's one of the things I do when I'm not, make, since I'm not making videos, I do do um, podcasts with Equestria Now every week where we talk about the episodes. And that's something I've been bringing up there for quite a while now is that um, I get the feeling that these writers don't have that same passion anymore. And they probably are just doing it because it's a popular show. It'll look really good on the resume. And uh, yeah. I mean, GM Burrow, I feel like, is probably still passionate about the ponies. I've met her in real, I've met her in person once or twice. I've been, ha you know, I've been lucky to have. And she's always loved writing the books. You know, I've read her books a lot. And it's like you get that feel from her. She's loved ponies since she was a kid, you know, and, and she loves the show. She wants to make it great and something special. But I get the feeling a lot of the writers now involved, including, unfortunately, the show editors this season and last season, don't have and don't hold that same level of passion and commitment to the show. And uh, it's kind of sad. Um, but like I was saying, when I'm not, since I'm not doing videos anymore, what am I doing? I do the podcast every week. So if you really want to hear what I think about episodes and you don't want to wait for a video that might or might not come, you might want to go over to Equestria now. Um, I don't want to, you know, just listen in every week, I guess. We're on a hiatus, so they're not going to be doing any new shows until season seven starts back up so you know whatever but uh let me think the other thing i'm doing I, i'm spending a lot of time nowadays actually doing programming uh, i've been doing coding um nothing really that's been released for public consumption necessarily besides posting my code online um i've made a bot for discord 
Uh, I began making another bot for Discord. <laughs> Pretty boring, huh? Um, and then I made uh, I made a website, worst.horse. Mm -hmm. And um, I coded it all pretty much from scratch. Uh, had a lot of fun doing that. You know, that, that's the type of thing I like to do now uh, with my free time instead of editing videos. Uh, the other thing uh, I've been working to write, see, this is going to be some geeky stuff here, um, which nobody will probably ever use, but it's something that I'm interested in doing and learning, and and, and um, I'm learning a lot by doing this stuff, even though I don't really need to know it. I don't ever really want to get paid for programming because I don't ever want it to become something that I have to do. You know, that's, that's always the death knell of anything you like doing. From my experience, I can tell you this. Um... So I, uh, I'm writing a derpy buru uh, API library in Node.js. I noticed they don't have one available. They have one in Python and Go. I've looked around a little and haven't really seen one that's good out there. So I'm going to try and do this myself. I'm going to try and do a Node.js derpy buru library for the API. If it's good enough, I might even try to do it um, uh, so it'll work on client side as well as server side so people can put it in their websites easier. Um, without having access to like a node.js environment and that probably goes over the I don't expect anyone listening to this video to know what I'm talking about I'm sorry sorry um, also nighty like is doing a new API for fin fiction and I'm gonna try and incorporate that in my bond try to learn that API and maybe do the same type of thing I'm working on for uh, the derpy brewer thing this is just on my own you know just on my own just doing it myself so maybe I'll do a fin fiction API library for Node.js, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. So, I mean, this is the stuff I'm doing. It's pretty geeky. Uh, you know, it's pretty boring for the most part, for most people probably think it is. But hey, check out worst.horse. You can reload it. You'll get a new one every time. Um, there's, uh, I gotta say, there's three ponies that you will see on that site. They will be randomly selected. Um, I made sure it's very random. It's, um, it's cryptically secure pseudo random, which is way more random than it really needs to be because it's for ponies. Um, but there's a 70% chance you'll get one pony, and a 15% chance you'll get another, and a 15% chance you'll get the third. So yeah, check it out. Um, what else am I doing? That's about it, man. I'm just living, you know. You, you all, you all know. Well, no, I work like a full time job, so you know, I got a lot going on. You know, my air conditioner is busted right now. I got to deal with that crap. I went to Europe a couple months ago. Yeah, I went to, um, I flew in through the UK to Denmark where I got my wallet stolen. And then I um, got on a cruise in Copenhagen to, we went to uh, uh, Wernermunde, Germany. Then to uh, uh, Gdynia, Poland. And then uh, Klaipeda, Lat Lithuania. And then Riga, Latvia. And uh, then Tallinn, Estonia, St. Petersburg, Russia, and up to Helsinki, Finland, Stockholm, Sweden, back to Copenhagen, Denmark. It was a really fun time. Um, I even bought some pony stuff, obviously, some pony merch um, overseas. You know, Russia's got these great little Kinder Egg things, and if you don't know what Kinder Eggs are, you might not if you're American because they're illegal here. Uh, it's basically like a chocolate egg with a toy inside. But Russia's got these great ones that have ponies inside, like little blind bag sized ponies, but they're totally different mold than what you get here in the U.S. And I bought like 10 of them, and I really wish I would have bought the whole box, because the chocolate was actually good. It wasn't like crappy chocolate, but the toys are good, the chocolate was good. I was like, dang, I should have bought a whole freaking box. But um, yeah, so I had a great time. Great time in Europe. Um, great time traveling. I will be going to BronyCon in August. I applied for a press badge. I don't even know if I'm going to get it because I haven't heard back. I think their press guy has changed or something. And I don't know if this new guy is doing things right or maybe they're just ignoring it because I did, instead of applying as part of a quest right now, I applied as part of a another news fandom news organization that's not held in high regard. So who knows? You know, I may end up actually buying a badge. Whatever. First year I bought a badge and then it'll just be like that again, I guess. But BronyCon's so expensive, man. I'm going to be driving up through, like, Michigan. And I'm going to be in a van with 
five grown men, and at least five life-size plushes, the majority of which will probably be Best Pony, but Twilight Sparkle, sorry. So it will be a fun time. It will be expensive. It's never cheap to go to BronyCon because the hotels there are so flipping expensive. And since I don't like to share hotel rooms with anybody except the people I trust the most, I'm going to be staying probably by myself. So, yeah, it's like $3,000 or some horrible number. But luckily, I made some money. I've also been doing cryptocurrency trading. Uh, not trading, but cryptocurrency, more investing, uh, more of a long-term thing. Um, but, you know, I hold a bunch of different cryptocurrencies all over the place, and um, I started buying it like a year ago, and I was focused mostly on Bitcoin and Ethereum, and I don't know if you guys are aware, but like at least two months ago, both of them had skyrocketed. So I put maybe $1,000, maybe less into them, and uh, two months ago I had like $7,500, <laughs> which is like a huge jump. Um, it's down to maybe 5000 now because, you know, bubbles tend to sort of burst or it didn't really burst a bubble. If it was a burst bubble, it would have been much lower. But, you know, things tend to go up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, but, yeah, it's I mean, it's still a lot more than I had when I began. So I'll probably end up leveraging most of that for BronyCon. Um, whatever. It's a good thing to have, right? I don't think I've got much else to say. And I feel like I've jabbered at y'all long enough. Um, my camera says I've been recording for like 50 minutes. But, you know, a good part of that was um, setting up the shower thing. The, oh, shit. Was I not supposed to say that was a bit? I really got to get better at this thing. I, I just don't know how to do this. Man. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Just forget I said that, okay? Just forget I said it. I won't edit it out in post, okay? Oh, maybe I have something else to say. Uh, no. I guess that's it. Whatever. Uh, hit me up if you want. Uh, for whatever, I guess. If you really want to. Uh, follow me on the Twitters. Smash the motherfucking like button. Yeah. For every, if I get, if I get one billion likes, I will, um, I will be all of your slaves for a day. Or something. I'll do something spectacular. Like, amazingly spectacular. If I get a billion likes, okay? If I get a billion likes, I'll personally go to all of your homes and shake your hand. And I will let you touch a Twilight Sparkle plush. That I own. That's how nice and kind I am. Even if you have Cheeto dust on your fingers. Now it might not be the expensive Twilight plush. Okay? Thanks for watching. Hope I didn't bore you all to tears. I have a feeling I'm going to have to edit this video pretty freaking heavily in post because I'm pretty sure it was all shit. So, maybe I'll be surprised. Well, have fun, guys. I will possibly see you around. Maybe BronyCon, come to Baltimore. August 10th. Bye. Bye. I mean, you ain't got to go home, but you can't stay here, so...